All right, doing some powder coating. Uh, this is the front uh, bracket for the frame and body. This is the bracket or hinge, the rear trunk hinge. Uh, I've got a lot of the stuff out here. I'm doing half of the car first. Um, half of the car is in half, just one side of everything. These I put together. I knew I was gonna have to take them apart again, but I wanted to get them together. I think it was a day I wanted to spend inside rather than be out in the cold. But uh, <clears throat> so putting that together, it's a powder coat system there. First ones I did, first pieces I did, it clumped up and everything, but that's all right because these are just temporary. I'm going to get some uh, overriders uh, to put on there. This is uh, part of the trunk latch I did. This is the other overrider. A little bit of goo on there. Anyway, yeah, it's kind of clumped up there. I'm using a cheap Harbor Freight system. I don't know if that makes a lot of difference. I know that Eastwood's got a, a powder coat system, but uh, yeah, I don't. I try not to spend too much on tools. Sometimes I know you need to in order to get good results, but this, this is just making it tough, not making it look great. Of course, I want it to look good, but I want it to be uh, nice and strong. So, and I don't want it flaking away like paint would from use. But anyway, get the powder. Okay, after I wire wheel the edges off to give them uh, not so sharp of an edge, um, I'll go ahead and put them in the uh, sandblasting cabinet here. <clears throat> give them a good blasting. This way the powder coat has something to grab onto. Just took these out of the sandblaster. Got a nice uh, rough texture to them now. Still dusty. I'll hang them up here in a few minutes and spray them off. These just come out of the oven. Nice and hot. Don't look too bad. Not bad at all. Alright, my powder coating skills got quite a bit better. The more you do it, the better you get at it. <clears throat> Not perfect, but it's pretty damn good. So I got my speed hut gauge in today for, got it all tore apart here, but my speed hut gauge came in for uh, the oil temperature in Fahrenheit, not Celsius. And I sent in my water temperature gauge and have them, had them change out that uh, Celsius for Fahrenheit, um, 25 bucks for that, to have that done. And these gauges are all lifetime guarantee, by the way. Speed hut, uh, these are the vintage gauges uh, in the kit. Uh, anyway, um, this was 129 for the gauge, the sending unit, uh, and the wiring. So for 129 and lifetime guarantee, um, I went ahead and ran the wire. I had to get an adapter to 
get it to fit. That's the sending unit there in an adapter. Uh, it was half inch to one eighth MPT adapter, and I put some conduit around the wire, and then also put some uh, heat uh, heat treat or heat insulation around it. I'm probably gonna put another little bit up here too, because it's still kind of close there. But then ran it through. I know this is a gobble wires here. I still gotta work that out and make it look pretty. But anyway, runs through this gobble wires. It's a gob, but it's labeled. Everything's labeled. Um, anyway, it comes around through here, and I just gotta hook it up now. Uh, I'm gonna cut another gauge through here. Um, a lot of guys, I think, would probably get rid of this clock. I like it, so I'm gonna keep it. And I'm gonna leave it in the center. I'm gonna leave my fuel gauge here, clock here, and I'm gonna put the amp, the amps over here, amp meter, volts. Put the volts down there. This is oil pressure, oil temp, and water temperature. That's how I'm gonna set them up. So my battery's dead, my caliper here, so I'm not even gonna mess with it tonight. But this was the uh, adapter I had to get for that sending unit. Half inch uh, MIP male input to a 1 8 FIP female input. It's all MPT. This come from uh, Home Depot. O'Reilly's didn't have it. Home Depot did. It was like four bucks. So four bucks for an adapter. Now I got a uh, oil temp sending unit and an oil temp gauge here coming up. adjuster in uh, the cable adjustment this is the uh, pivot ball and T that comes with the factory 5 kit it's got the front and rear master cylinder and uh, the two shafts run to these um, clevises here and then this 
rod across here, you can adjust it to put more power onto the brakes or more pressure onto the brakes in the front or the rear. And uh, that's what this cable is. You just punch through there, went up to the front the firewall and mounted it right there. That's enough I need to for racing or just getting it adjusted in general. I can just reach down right under the dash and uh, put the dome line on, make it easier to see. Anyway, right into my dash there and adjust it. Now I think it's about time to button up this. I don't think I need to get in there anymore. So I'll get that done and then maybe put the side on here pretty soon because uh, I'm working towards putting the body on. Really close. Oh, I got to get this windshield wiper done here. I got the plug in today. So I got to put the plug in, wire the wire it up to the plug, and then plug it in. I got, I got a total of like four wires, four or five wires that need to go into this plug. Yeah, five wires. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start wiring these windshield wipers together. Uh, this is the plug that I had to order from Finish Line. So now, instead of connecting spade connectors to, uh, to the windshield wiper plug, which would be, instead of connecting spade connectors to those plugs right there on the car, the wiper, which by the way, that's loose. I'm going to put some glue on that. Anyway, instead of putting spade connectors on there, what I'm going to do is use this. I'm going to use this plug here. Make it a little bit more um, professional looking. So no spade connectors. So now, got to wire this up. Now there's four wires there. Four or five here. One's probably the negative, so I'm gonna look through the instructions here. You gotta find these on, on the web. These aren't included in the kit because this is an option. Wipers are an option. So here's my schematic. So now this is what I gotta do. I got uh, purple fuse wire, which that's the wire coming from uh, the Ron Francis kit. The green low speed, brown high speed. This is the switch, this is the wiper. And then black at the top there is the ground. Yellow is the park function. So I'm assuming the park function is whenever you shut the wipers off, it, it pulls the wipers all the way down. That, that's what I'm assuming it is. But anyway, so now I'm gonna wire this up.
Okay, this is the purple wire for the Ron Francis harness. So this is labeled wiper. So this is gonna go, it's gonna go in and connect to this white wire. So I'll run it up through this heat shrink here. It's gonna connect to this and then go into one of these prongs that'll go a spade connector here, female spade connector that will connect to the uh, switch down here. Or not the switch, but the plug on the uh, wiper. What do you want? Okay, I got this hooked up right now, but uh, to begin with, what I did wrong was I was, well, I was popping fuses left and right. And I kept looking at how everything was wired in and it was done right. The only problem is this plug, factory fives and their instructions are set to where you just put it in like this. The problem is the plug is turned around this way. So the yellow wire, I put it in like this. The problem is the yellow wire needed to go in this direction would have put it around this way so that's how you have to basically hook this thing up you have to follow this not this so everything was opposite of each other so I just had to uh, my pin tools that I have I didn't have one small enough so I had to take a uh, take a screwdriver and modify it and uh, was able to pop all the pins out and switch them around Although I didn't uh, put my heat shrink back on here. I did put a piece of heat shrink on here because I didn't like the way this purple and white wire had, didn't exactly pull apart, but they, I think the conduit had slid back a little bit on the white wire. So um, I put a little piece of heat shrink there. Um, I'm just gonna put conduit around here, just like this to cover it all up, but got it all working. It's working fine. Um, so now I'm gonna run these wires and get it looking nice, up tight and out of sight.
putting in the switch right here. <clears throat> measured. Measured the distance. Kind of keep it equal. That's where I throw my pilot hole. So having another issue with fitment, um, this is the switch that came with the uh, windshield wiper, uh, windshield wiper kit. Uh, the issue I'm having is this is what's left over from when I put the gauge in uh, the dash. This is what the dash is made of. It's that thick plastic there right here and then foam at the top. The foam will crush, but the plastic will not. So the issue I'm having is can't uh, get enough room to get a bite on those threads so this big square piece here looks like it's pinched down on this housing here so what I have to do is as you can see I've already done this side here I've kind of used my file there and filed it down flat as I can get and over here you can see where I haven't done this little lip there in the corner it's not gonna give me much but it's gonna give me something and I'm gonna keep filing it down a little bit more a little bit more and then I'm gonna have to go to the back of the dash I guess pull the dash out and then uh, maybe sand down some of this uh, at least in the shape of a square here to uh, make it fit right into a pocket there so what was gonna take about 15 minutes is now taking quite a while and gotta take more apart than I planned but that's pretty much how it goes when you're building a car even if it is a kit I marked with the engraver what wires go where. The green wire goes there. Um, I think that's a B. Oh yeah, brown wire, yellow, and white. Just to make it easier to put it back together. Okay, looks like I got enough threads in there now. So what I had to do <clears throat> is take my sander, reach in there, sand off some of the plastic, plastic backing. This padding, I can zoom in here. This padding will crush and it's fine. Plastic will not. So, sanded it down. And I'm able to get some threads. So that way I can kind of crush down the padding just a little bit. But, it took off quite a bit there. 
but I didn't want to go too far down because it wouldn't be strong enough anymore. So that's where I'm stopping. So what I did it with was <laughs> this here. About the only thing I could reach down in there with without taking the whole dash off. Put this cover on. Got to put the roof nuts in. back in the floor again. Well, I could have took this out, but I didn't.
All right, before I seal this up <clears throat> permanently, um, I decided to put a clutch uh, adjustment up here. That way I can reach under the hood and adjust the clutch rather than have to get up under the car and adjust it that way. So that's what I got going on here now. So now I can adjust it by just twisting. So get this clutch all hooked back up. I got it off the ground right now. I think that's right where it's at right now is probably where I'm going to leave it when I put the body on, which is coming close. Um, I need to take this body out in the yard, I think, and I want to coat the inside with some sort of truck bed liner, like a Herky liner or something like that. And uh, that way it'll resist some, help resist some rock chips or rocks that fly up and hit the bottom and spider web the body. I've been hearing a lot about that. So that's what I'm going to try and do here. But uh, for now, I'm going to just get everything else buttoned up. It's just about buttoned up and ready for the body. There's only a couple things I still want to do. I mean, obviously, put this side on here and uh, rivet that in and then rivet this section in here. But for the most part, I think I'm ready for the body. 